Good afternoon, everyone. This is my presentation um, for bioinformatics component in personalized medicine, where I talk about different uh, different domains in bioinformatics, proteomics, structural biology, metabolomics, cell signaling, genomics, transcriptomics, and how each of the components can integrate its fashion or a multi-omic fashion is the key approach for following the problems of medicine. So recently, not very long ago, a few months ago, we had new deaths, five more deaths were found by South Side viruses in May 2013, and a few days later, like more viruses like SARS were identified in this month, July 2013. So how do we combat such difficult problems? How do we immediately solve such problems? We, can we wait for one month of experiments to be done, or should we do it quickly by the most? logic, computational methods, and software. So the, this is kind of a review of so the first, <coughs> first session I'm talking about proteomics, structural biology. So in 2013, we had the SARS virus outbreak. It, uh, it was supposed to be originated either in Toronto or in Hong Kong. What is the case be? So if looking at the morphology, um, the, the virus belongs to the corona coronavirus, the answer virus category. And so the coronaviruses are not that virulent or harmful as this virus was coming out to be. So they got to be something different than it, which we were not able to say just by looking at it under the microscope. So the key way is to look at the molecules or the biomolecules in it and the genome was sequenced quickly. Luckily the genome was not that big as is the case in this virus. And all the different genes were identified by mapping it to our other coronaviruses. And certain regions, known as X or an unknown, there were many X's, were left unidentified for their functionality. So the, obviously, one of the virulent factors that we have in this virus can be attributed to this unknown, uh, these unknown genes or OR, OR stands for open gene frames, different frames in which the, the DNA gets. Transcribed and translated. So this uh, ORF was taken and then blasted or put in a blast uh, comparison to the uh, NCDA database. And the best match we got was a calcium binding protein. What do we do with this match? We then thought, let's look at the structure of it. And the structure was not available in the database because it takes a lot of pain to generate a valid good structure of a protein. So the structure was not available, so what do we think logically? We took this match and blasted it again and found other calcium binding proteins of that domain and picked up those ones which have their structure in the RAS model or PDP protein data bank database and did a multiple sequence alignment and found out the regions of homology. Star is a perfect alignment or and the cell color protein, either physical or chemical uh, similarities in the amino acid recipes. So once this homology is collected, we can take the consensus with the movie's motors and build a structure of it, computationally, by prediction. Go to the lower energy levels and all those things. And once those, uh, that structure is predicted with certain confidence, maybe 70% what, what the best we can do, protein folding problem and unsolved, unsolved problem yet, then we look at different cations which can bind to that whole homology region, which are the calcium binding proteins. And, and we found that this ORF also binds to calcium. And it shows it can also bind other cations like magnesium or whatever is, is the periodic table for the calcium in the row, you know, in the column. Um, but the best energy level was coming for calcium, and we proposed that, that this protein is a calcium binding protein uh, and essentially a virus that it introduces its genome into the host, such as human beings. Wherever this calcium binding is important for the metabolic functionality, there it will take away all its functionality and can all can eventually lead to death. There were also some more analysis such as the transmembrane region as to where does it exactly bind and how the trafficking of the, the metabolic can take place. So this, this is the power of, uh, and eventually in 2003, this was published, 2004, and eventually the SARS outbreak was stopped. But there 
there are many more stretches to this. So then we can move to the metabolomic and cell signaling. So what is metabolomic is, is that if we have a urine sample or a blood sa sample or any any human um, you know body fluid sample, if we can take out its peptides of proteins that are being secreted, then we can look for the signatures in them and match it to a database of known people with diseases. So say someone is suffering from certain kind of cancer and he expresses certain kind of additional peptides during that stage, then for a person who wants to get into a diagnosed, we can look at those samples and we do a comparison. And if there's signature matches, we say, okay, there's a certain possibility that you're at this stage of your illness. So what is done is that peptide chain is there, we break it for lysis into the condition, we charge it, so we get an M by Z, uh, M by Z value, and then we have a plot of dilution because we're not sure whether that whether that M by Z value we're getting is right. So we dilute it. And so we get a certain curve, and now this curve is so disturbing, you know, like it sometimes goes up, sometimes goes down, and it's not so regular. So we, again, there's a need of biosmatics to treat each of, each of these curves individually, reduce the noises, come up with the least regression or, you know, plot, and then that's their uh, generated weighted and measured value, and then come to the comparison. So this is all mathematical computer science logic that is involved. So I made a topic about proteome break. So the blue lines are the actual data plot. And this is, the red line is the one which, uh, which you will get when you do not take, uh, reduce the noises, do, do not do mathematic analysis. If I shut down the noises, the noises will not necessarily be in the front, it can even be in the back. We generate this regression line, the green line. Such a big difference in the slope of these lines which generate such a magnitude of difference in the resulting in by the value that we take into consideration. We can also opt for a non-linear regression line, such as the supplement. This will be written in MATLAB, and they also make a standalone Java version of the software. So and this can be looked up essentially to the database and we can find out uh, the state of an industry. And for example, if we in the cell, if you know the pathway, such as the red signaling, which is important in, in, in cancer or even in uh, actually in development, and if this development process goes wrong, then a certain section is overproduced. Uh, we have unwanted proteins, uh, then that leads to cancer. So all these reactions, these are all chemical reactions. We are having inside the cell, we call it biochemical reaction. The chemical kinetics law will be observed here. The certain, you know, tuned in chemical kinetic laws like KMK cat, forward, fast, forward, backward. All these parameters can be created into a reaction mathematically uh, and then we can plot, plot the way all these components can plot it, how these their concentration varies with time. So this is without any external signal to the cell. And once the signal is changed, how the variation of each of these components can change. And that what we have is a virtual cell or, an, or, 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 a, or a, an artificial cell uh, that we have generated. We can control the cell now. Or if the person is suffering from certain things, we can uh, you know, do the things that are experimentally different computationally and have a clearer understanding of what actually happens inside the cell of the disease person as the case is. Another case would be like if we have a set of reactions, chemical reactions, or biochemical reactions like this, where downstream product goes and binds to a certain pocket in the enzyme such that it affects the catalytic side, the reaction side of the enzyme. And thus the reaction can either stop, reduce, or maybe enhance. What is the case be? So if it stops, we'll have less production of that, the ultimate metabolite that we are interested in. And that might be not what we want. For example, if we want oil, lipid, then we don't want this regulation. We, we just want to cut off these regulations and this reaction will just do it. We will have it go forward more and more. And on the other hand, when the disease is going very, very fast forward, we want to stop it or reduce it. Such as in the case of cancer, where the red is like overproduced, we don't want that to happen. We want to stop this. We want to regulate this because 
speed forward, you know, it is enhancing on the clock. So what I propose is that we make this artificial chamber like this, and it's predictably permeable, C goes out predictably, none of these components can go back in, but only C can go out. So this will happen, but can this actually happen in a, in a biocellular environment? The cell multiplies and divides, so will this compartment also multiply and divide the next daughter cell? Not really. So what we do is, psychologically, instead of going, so essentially if we wait for one million years, theoretically, all the other state domains will go away. As per Darwin's law of survival of the fittest, selection, pressure, and stuff like that. So after one million years, the other state domain will go away, only the other state domain will remain, and if we remove this camera at that moment, we just have the desired reaction without any kind of state control. We have a deregulation here. So we can't wait for one million years forward. What we can do is go one million years backward phylogenetically. So we go for the same reaction, we find for the same reaction in a different species where such thing has happened naturally. What I propose in which we've done, uh, it's not possible to wait one million years, we go for one million years backward. And thus we can have a bit of control in cancer, I tested this for overproduction of vitamin B5, hydrogenase, which is an end product in itself, or it can be hooked up to the lipid pathway or the production pathway. So, so this leads compound binds here. This, and it regulates it, so I can take a compartment here, typically, and we have an unregulated control. So coming to the genomic section, which is uh, the final section, I already talked about it uh, in detail earlier. I'll talk about it again very briefly because maybe there's some more new audiences here. Um, so we know that the variations can be brought in that slide in the and such a variation, which can be further Singles and common And there are different methods that are already existing. SMB as well as split read, read, get, read pair. Because we know the, the read get in either end of the fragment, we know the research size roughly. So if there is SMB map this whole bit to a reference, and if, we, if this information does not exactly match with what we would have expected, then there is a insertion solution. And if it, it doesn't match with the number of coverage we did it experimentally, there can be a duplication or a cost number variation. So these are pretty logical and the whole thing is how you put it in a form of program for for data which is of the order of terabytes. We are not small data of megabytes or gigabytes, we have terabytes of data. Or maybe at least 200 gigabytes. So that's the damage. Computational complexity, time is important, data handling is important, and the logic is the most important, the algorithm. And this will be the, the, the end result that we are interested in a certain loci region, which might have a gene which is responsible for certain functions, such as uh, such as for a person which, which, to, which is linked up for a person to get taller, or a person to have sickle cell anemia problem. You know, we can look at all those uh, all those uh, factors that are there. And I made a topic called genome break which can find out variations from as small as just one basis to as big as one million basis. That's a huge number, one million basis. And, that, and so we, if we can also find a protective determination of a person by taking out the, the DNA from the fetal or state of an organism or human being and determine the sex of the individual by just comparing the matches with the father and the mother. A times father, B for mother. C and D are two children which happen to be the daughter in this case. And this this was more deterministic than I used the structural variations instead of this, as if the relative difference was higher. And it also proposed that that FEs are higher, better characteristics, uh, signature of uh, an individual phenotype that we are interested in. And it also says that FEs have more um, more restriction in terms of the selection pressure and changes that are there. And that's obviously because codons that code for amino acids have have like there are multiple codons that code for the same amino acid. So SNPs, SNPs can happen a lot, yet code for the same amino acid, because there's the selection pressure doesn't change it. But when we change the indels, there is a frame shift, there's a codon shift, there's a the there's a, amino acids can change, a lot of things can happen. So there's more selection pressure when structuration happens. So the conclusion is we saw that all these factors in a, in a combined way, the biomechanics is very crucial 
uh, when, we, when we talk about proteomics, genomics, uh, you know, cell signaling, metabolomics, is an integrated approach to solve uh, the data problem. In our case, it's a medical problem. Uh, that is it. These are a couple of my papers. Those are actually. That's my email ID, and that's my message to get back to me. Thank you.